Caulfield, uh, what's your reaction to what's been agreed in Brussels? Well, I think, you know, talking uh, to lots of people and hearing from constituents already this morning, there's a huge disappointment uh, that we've got another extension uh, and really no plan uh, in what to do with that time. You know, I cannot see, uh, in all honesty, um, a huge amount of progress being made between now and October. And I think uh, extending the time actually takes the pressure off people to, to make a decision, uh, certainly in Parliament. Well, Mrs May and indeed uh, the Brexit minister this morning both saying, look, the way to sort this out, the way to avoid European elections is to vote for the withdrawal agreement. Uh, some of your colleagues have changed their minds on that. Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees-Mogg, are you minded to change your mind? Well, I voted for the withdrawal agreement twice now uh, because I could see the writing on the wall and I could see that it was coming. And I don't like the withdrawal agreement. I think the backstop has huge problems, particularly for Northern Ireland. But I voted for it because uh, at least it gets us out of the EU and we can then uh, look at the future plans after that. Um, but talking to colleagues, you know, those who are going to uh, cross over and vote for the deal have done so. Uh, you know, we heard from Hillary Benn earlier. There is a ploy by those uh, MPs who never wanted to leave the EU in the first place, to kick the can down the road. You are not going to convince them to vote for this deal. So I think as many MPs that were going to vote for the deal um, have done so, and I think bringing it back for another time, I don't think is going to get us any further. And if we think Labour, uh, with their cross-party talks, uh, have any interest in resolving this matter, we're fooling ourselves. This plays right into Jeremy Corbyn's hands to string this out as long as possible, to cause as much division in the Conservative Party as possible, and not deliver Brexit. Uh, those MPs who want to deliver Brexit have voted for the withdrawal agreement and I can't see that changing significantly between now and October. So if the deal is dead and it's not going to get through Parliament as Mrs May would like, uh, what's going to happen? Well, you know, I think we, we do need to have an honest discussion about uh, what other options are on the table. The only thing that has got through the House of Commons, you know, we've, uh, the House of Commons has voted against revoking Article 50, against the second referendum, against the customs union. The only thing that got through was uh, the Brady Amendment looking at uh, changing that backstop. And, you know, the one thing I haven't heard from the Prime Minister when she's been going back and forth to Brussels is asking them to relook at the backstop. And they've said no, but you have to go back. Just going back and asking for an extension is really just kicking the can down the road. If the right. backstop could be resolved um, or, you know, looked at uh, and given some legal reassurances, there was an ex exit mechanism, um, you know, that deal would get through Parliament tomorrow. Yes, but it's a fantasy, Maria Caulfield. I mean, in the uh, conclusions that were agreed by Britain and the other 27 uh, yesterday or overnight, it says explicitly that the withdrawal agreement is not up uh, for renegotiation. Furthermore, it's been stated by Michel Barnier that if we leave without a deal, the first thing we'll have to do uh, before anything else can proceed is agree to uh, the withdrawal agreement. So this notion that Parliament voted for the Brady Amendment or favours uh, the uh, Malthouse Compromise, it's just a dream and it it's means it's that there's going to be no progress if that's what you carry on believing. It's a dream because no, no, the Prime Minister has not gone back and asked for it. So she's asked for an extension twice now. She has never asked... She has um, asked for it and she's been told no and she's agreed it's not well, going to go you know, forward. In a negotiation, you know, when we have no deal on the table, if your request is denied, at this stage of the negotiations, you have to be prepared to walk away. And that is the frustration that many of us have. If we are um, saying that there is no compromise um, on well, the EU side, we will be yeah. here till the end of October in exactly the same uh, position. And this is the frustration by the British public. Yeah, the whether other, they voted, the other, the other no, whether they voted the, Leave the, or Remain, yeah, well, people on, want some certainty. Minute, because, because the other pro the other problem you've got, yeah, well, they may want certainty. They have got one bit of certainty from Parliament, uh, which is that Parliament has repeatedly voted not to leave without an agreement. So again, your notion of walking away, uh, which would mean no deal, that's another fantasy. Well, I think Parliament, you know, has, a, you know, is a complete embarrassment, really, for the country. Not just, you know, uh, the, the shenanigans that have gone on in the last 24 hours, but the Parliament was given instructions by the British people to leave. Now, there wasn't an agreement on how we should leave, but that was given uh, to us to make that decision. It is absolutely shameful that nearly, uh, you know, years on from that referendum result, we are no further forward. And if anyone thinks this extension is going to make that decision any easier or, or likely, that, you know, they're foolish because we will see 
simply go round in circles, kicking that can down the road. This requires leadership, um, either from the Prime Minister or from the Cabinet, uh, to come up with a solution to this, because Parliament won't. You know, you've got too many factions. You've got most MPs who want to remain in the EU, who are doing their best uh, to destroy any hope of Brexit. You have got some on the Leave side who uh, are holding out for an ideal Brexit, which frankly isn't going to happen. And those of us in the middle who have compromised are not large enough in numbers to get that deal through. And that is the situation the country finds itself in. And I'm embarrassed to be an MP at the moment uh, to say to my constituents, whether they voted Leave or Remain, that after so much time, we are still no further forward. It is embarrassing for the country. I mean, just for the record, a majority of your constituents, I think, voted uh, narrowly uh, to remain. Do you think Mrs May is the right person uh, to uh, lead the Conservative Party and the country at this time? Well, whether she's the right person or not, she's the person in charge and she is the Prime Minister. You know, there is no uh, mechanism to challenge her between now and, and the end of the year. So she has to be the one uh, that's going to continue these discussions. But am I uh, impressed? Absolutely not. And my plea to her is to listen to colleagues. You know, many of us said this when the Chequers deal came out, uh, you know, last year, that there were going to be problems getting this deal through Parliament. And we weren't listened to then. We're not being listened to now. And unless there is, tr you know, people have their listening ears on and listen to colleagues' real concerns, then we are going to get no further forward. Jeremy Corbyn is going to have these cross-party discussions. He's going to string this out as long as possible, hoping for an early general election. You know, the, the people that, that could get this deal through the line are not being listened to at the moment. OK, Maria Caulfield, thank you very much indeed for joining us. We will